Hey guys, and welcome to Mangotology, and thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Stephen Mango, and I'm an ex-Scientologist that works here on YouTube to expose Scientology. So if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, please make sure to go down below and click on that subscribe button, as well as the bell icon right next to it, so you stay notified whenever I release a new video. So today, we are going to be talking about what Scientologists, more specifically volunteer ministers, were caught doing. I don't know if anyone else has reported or talked about this before. So we are going to get into it and show you the post in the photo and tell you my thoughts about what actually happened. And I know you guys are probably like, what in the world is he talking about? We are going to get into that today, as well as I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an update on myself as well. I was just in the hospital a few days ago. And just again, more of my thoughts, ramblings, feelings about Scientology. That's going to be at the end of the video. So if you guys are interested in hearing more about my personal side of things. I know some of you guys don't. You just come in for the Scientology news. But if you are interested in hearing more about myself, then stay tuned all the way through to the end. So you guys know I've donated or had money taken out of my accounts when it wasn't like a donation that I gave on my own free will to Scientology. And I don't think a lot of people know that there's multiple different streams of money that are required to donate to Scientology. And this is tied into what we're going to talk about. You're giving money to go on course, right? Because you have to study the actual text and philosophy of Scientology, where you actually get like a book, you get lecture tapes, you get whatever, you get like your course pack where you actually have to answer certain questions, like say when you're studying the basic book and lectures, right? So you're going to be actually going into a course room, you sit down, there's a course instructor or a course supervisor rather, and you sit there and everyone could be on the same course, people could be on different courses, it doesn't matter because every course in Scientology is self-studied. So I could be doing self-analysis and someone next to me could be doing Dianetics and someone on the other side of me could be doing self-analysis. We're all in the same course room. We are reading the Scientology text by L. Ron Hubbard or policy letters, whatever. We're reading through them and every word we don't understand, we have to look up into a dictionary as well as the derivation dictionary. The course supervisor's rules to come over and they'll do either like a meter check on you and say like, what word didn't you quite understand? Or did you go past a misunderstood word? Has anything been suppressed? Like they ask you all these different questions on the e-meter. Other times they'll come over and do kind of like a spot check and they'll say, what does this word mean? What does this word mean? And if you don't know a word, you have to go look it up. You have to make sentences. Sometimes you have to do demonstrations. There's that side of Scientology, which everyone has to do. Eventually, even if you're just going up the bridge to be um, to receive auditing, you also later on have to go and study and train to be an auditor. That's in the academy. So you're going to be having to do, say, pro TRs, and you're going to have to do metering, and you're going to have to do class zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to be able to train as an auditor to deliver those required levels. So there's donations you have to make towards becoming an auditor. Then, obviously, for your auditing, when you're actually receiving the spiritual counsel and you have to donate money, and it's called intensives of auditing that you have to purchase. So an intensive is 12 and a half hours of auditing. So, for example, I probably mentioned, like, say, to go clear, you might need, say, 20 intensives of auditing. That's probably, like, way too low anyways, but whatever. Say you need 20 intensives of auditing. And each intensive at Celebrity Center is $3,500 or $3,600. probably between $3,400 and $3,600 conservatively. That's kind of what it was years ago. It's probably even more than that now, but I'm still guessing it's in the same three to $4,000 price range. So again, do the math. That's about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 just to go up to a certain point on the bridge. Then besides all of that, you have to donate money to the IAS. And this is what we're going to be talking about today in terms of the fake disaster relief that was caught on camera. So we're talking about that today. But just so you guys know, IAS is a membership. You guys have seen me wear my $5,000 t-shirt. There's pins. It goes way up into the millions of dollars. You donate that. It goes into Scientology's war chest, essentially. So they can fight off the critics of Scientology. They could fight against psychiatry, the government, enemies, anyone that Scientology perceives may be actually interfering with the growth and prosperity and all of that of Scientology, they're going to use that money to protect themselves against attacks. But they also, on more of the surface, like when you're new to Scientology, when it's not really like you're in the mindset of Scientology's life or death, because that's what it really comes down to, where you get text messages like, our planet's going to implode if you do not come in on course today and get up 
the bridge like it's your duty to do so like that's what happens later in the beginning it's like hey come on take a course it's fifty dollars you're gonna learn how to communicate more quickly it progresses to you are on this mission it's life or death this is your chance to go spiritually free and also by the way we need a donation for eighty five thousand dollars because scientology might not be able to be here on this planet they're also going to say in the beginning you know there's children who are starving there's kids who are illiterate there are drugs that are like controlling us and fueling us and hooking us on these like pharmaceuticals for example and these illnesses are just developed by these big pharmaceutical companies and other doctors entities and people who want to hook you onto these pills that are going to be bringing in billions of dollars of profits for these pharmaceutical companies that later go and run the media for example and they control us through these messages and commercials and all sorts of things like that so it goes into this place where it's like they scare you into giving donations but it's also like hey like you know there's disasters there's fires there's floods hurricane katrina i remember when that happened i was being asked for donations and different things like that and even though maybe if there's any sort of Thing, they'll send some volunteer ministers there to do like touch assist which are basically these like spiritual healing processes where you know even if you have like a broken arm you know be like feel my finger thank you feel my finger thank you feel my finger thank you and they do these different drills to put yourself back into communication with yourself right and it's like okay yeah like you can do a touch assist but when people's homes are being destroyed and families are being hungry and have none of their possessions or, you know, it's disaster relief stuff that they need to be done. Like, okay, like there's some like, more important things I told you to do with your money than send people to these disaster sites to take pictures acting as if you're doing something at these disaster sites. Or yes, maybe you're doing some touch assist. Maybe you're maybe helping a little bit or acting like you're helping or like carrying a child on your shoulder. But who else is there? Photographers taking pictures so then they can go back to people like me in sunny Hollywood, California, right? I'm in some glamorous building, you know, in Los Feliz in California and I'm sitting in this Hollywood castle being shown this image like look at what your donations are able to do look at this volunteer minister carrying and rescuing this child and helping to bring them you know into safety and this is what we're doing Steve and this is what Scientology really truly is Scientology is doing all these wonderful things you see all these horrible people out in society trying to tear down humanity and make us you know just these drugged out zombies who you know, are just barely functioning. Look at how able Scientologists are and how much they're able to do for our world. And then you see these type of photos of these kids and these different things and you're like, well, maybe I should help. Maybe I should give money. It, they are doing something. Clearly they're there. You know, there's videos or pictures or something. But I'm telling you, I know as a Scientologist, as not now, a former Scientologist, <laughs> imagine if I really was this whole time and this has been a big conspiracy <laughs> or something. No, it isn't. But clearly and i'm super gay so it's not like they want someone who's openly gay in scientology that's a whole nother video and people always ask me too like oh like how are you gay in scientology i wasn't out when i was in scientology i was completely closeted and again that's another story video and i've posted a lot of different times about that i've been getting a lot of comments about that recently and i just think it's very weird that people don't know that i've talked about it in a lot of different videos but i know that a lot of times i'll send messages like hey does anyone want to go and you know, wear your volunteer minister shirt and do a, you know, assist, a nerve assist or whatever. And they take photos at these different, you know, disaster sites or they do things, you know, with kids like, you know, after school help and you, you'll sit there and work with the kid all to try to bring people into Scientology. It was all a money pit. It was never like, oh, I really want to help this person. It's like I'm introducing them to Scientology. If I'm helping someone, I'm wearing a yellow Scientology volunteer minister shirt and that's going to give my church a good name. So therefore people are going to have a better impression of us. So they'll want to come into Scientology Scientology want to come on course and not look at us as like this negative evil criminal cult that it really actually is. So let me show you the post that I saw during the Woolsey fires. Now there were all these different fires that were happening in California around November of 2018 last year. I know it's many months later like since this actually has happened. I got reminded of this post. I actually sent it to Leah Remini several months ago and stuff like that and I wanted to kind of just talk about it myself and put it out there so you guys actually 
see what I saw on Facebook. Now, there are different like gossip groups on Facebook. These are not the ex-Scientologist groups, but these are just like entertainment news sort of groups. And this is where I saw this post. And it has nothing to do with Scientology. They gossip about celebrities and someone posted this about Scientology. This makes me sick. These people from the Scientology church are faking handing out waters. They keep loading and unloading two cases of water on film. The one guy said, let's do it 20 times to make it look like the whole truck is full and we are helping. I took a picture and told them to go blank themselves. This is Walmart parking lot where there are many people left with nothing. They have no insurance, no home, no friend or family that didn't suffer. And we have a church acting like they are helping to please the higher ups. Just disgusting. Now, if you don't know about these fires, the, the Wolsey fire was a destructive wildfire that burned in Los Angeles and Ventura counties of the United States of California. The fire ignited on November 8, 2018 and burned 96,949 acres of land. The fire destroyed 1,643 structures, killed three people, and prompted the evacuation of more than 295,000 people. It was one of several fires in California that ignited on the same day. While the nearby hill fire was contained with minimal damage on November 16th, the campfire in Northern California destroyed most of the town of Paradise. So these fires, I can insert some images here so you guys can see. they were completely ravaging through Southern California. I live, again, more on the east side of Los Angeles, more like Hollywood sort of area. These fires were more on the west side where Malibu is, Ventura, like very far out in the valley. So that's like here and I'm like here. So, and it looks close on camera, but really I'm talking in the span of dozens of miles from where I live. So I didn't actually get any sort of evacuation. I didn't have to deal with that. It was very scary because I know people who live on like that side of town and stuff and a lot of celebrities and people live on the west side and they live in Malibu, Calabasas, like far out into the valley. And we weren't sure if those fires were actually going to reach closer to Los, Los Angeles where we would have to possibly evacuate or if it would ravage this far. But it is the way it's kind of set up, kind of like where I live. I live up in the hills. So if there are fires with like the trees and bushes and brush and all that sort of stuff it could be very very dangerous so it's just scary because that's how it is when you live up in the hills and stuff like that and if there's a fire you know you're basically done for so this post is saying that they were handing out or acting like they were handing bottles of water like crates of water like down the line of the other Scientologists acting as if they were going to go and give them to people or families or people who actually needed it now could you imagine this is supposed to be a church that's helping people my donations my fifty thousand dollars or a portion of that was to the IAS I was thinking was actually going to help people such as at the Woolsey fire. I'm thinking that people are actually going to get some type of benefit from that money. And then in switching things around, they go with TV cameras for their Scientology TV and action. Okay, cut. What do they do? They get the crates or the packs of water, like those 24 supermarket things of water, and they put it back into the trucks. They load up the truck and they drive away. Like the least they could do would be to give those water to people. But they were doing it strictly to show from a public relations standpoint that we are helping people. We are getting this help out to all these different people. And then you're thinking, well, why would they even bother to do this? It's all about public relations. This is what Scientology is all about. So when they show other government officials, leaders, dignitaries, people in the world, or just your average everyday person, when they want to show what Scientology is, because people like me say, I'm just like, I never knew about Scientology. I'm an average person say, you know, it's a cult and there's aliens and they believe in all this crazy stuff and they abuse people and they take their money. Steve, look at this amazing video that's showing all the help that we did for the California wildfires. Look at what we did for the hurricanes. We opened a brand new Narconon, their drug rehab, in Ojai. And we're going to have that be a luxurious retreat for people to be able to come and spiritually repair and heal after years of damage from drugs and alcohol. We are going and doing things that 
are brave and courageous in helping people. And not only just with disaster relief and stuff, we're helping kids. We are offering spiritual counseling services in our church, self-improvement. We are helping people being able to become better versions of themselves. So yeah, you can listen to some of the critics on the internet, but look at all the wonderful things we're doing. And to someone who doesn't know better, be like, yeah, like they are doing some good things. Like they're, they can't be all that bad. Really though, they are loading up trucks of water, pretending to unload them while there's smoke billowing in the background. Like this is a big movie set, like they're filming something when this is like people's real lives that are being affected. They unload the water and then they load it back up and drive away. Can you guys actually believe this? Like I just think it's so crazy that they continue to do this, that they care more about their image, having good television program that no one watches on direct TV or to show in their orgs, being able to have like video panels, like showing like they're doing all this wonderful helping stuff. If you actually were Scientology, that would be one thing. But even so, like people would see behind that, like you can do charity work and still be a horrible criminal group. It's clear that you're doing it because you're trying to repair your image to act like Leah Remini show, Going Clear, My Scientology Movie, Stephen Mango on YouTube, and all these other critics. You want to try to prove us all wrong when it's like we can kind of clearly see through what you guys are trying to do. I just feel bad for anyone who actually thought like, oh, like we're gonna actually be receiving help today. And look, it's a church, because people might not even know what Scientology is. Look, some type of church that has celebrities like Tom Cruise involved are coming to help us. And look, they're unloading water and then they load it back into their truck and they drive away. Are we supposed to pretend like this never actually happened? And yet it was posted on a Facebook group. I sent it to Leah and I, try to get this post to go out there. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just make a video about it. It's so many months later, but it still just goes to show and prove to you guys what Scientology actually is about, what they do, and how they operate as a cult. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this whole entire situation. I think that whenever we see these type of posts on social media from Scientology, they have different Twitter pages, Instagram, stuff like that. Post about this video, post, message them, let them know that you guys don't believe it, that you guys see through it, that, you know, they could be handing out waters, even though they really weren't, but if they were, it's like, it doesn't mean that you're not harming people. Like you're using what you say is good. This is what's so evil about it. Something that you say is like a good act and you're using that good act to manipulate people that were like myself at 18 years old, 19 years old, whatever, 10 years ago, you're trying to manipulate people like me to give you money and to join and to take courses and do stuff, thinking that you guys are like this spiritual group that is helping and so caring and nurturing and doing all these wonderful things for society, when really you're doing it to control, to manipulate, and to take advantage of vulnerable people. And that's what's so evil about it, Scientology. So anyways, that was what I wanted to tell you guys about first, since no one's talked about that. Secondly, the part about myself, since I'm kind of using this almost like a diary in a way, like this channel at least, to talk about my feelings. Like Mango Tea is my beauty drama channel. It's not really my place to talk about my personal self there really as much since I'm reporting on other people's drama and situations, like a news channel in a way. And I know that this is too, like I'm talking about serious stuff, exposing Scientology and whatever, but you know, it really ties into my personal feelings and like what I've gone through and like the my own personal aftermath of leaving Scientology and how it's damaged me in different ways and just as you go through life things come up and you know I, f I feel like a lot of my traumas you know majority of them have stemmed from Scientology where it's like if I only never got in in the first place I was thinking about this earlier today if I never got in the first place I wonder really what my mental health would be like and what my mind would be like and just like me as a person in general if I didn't have exposure to Scientology's philosophy or ways of thinking or different ways of looking at the world. Like I just really wonder what type of person I would be. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe my life would have been worse. Maybe I would have fallen into drugs or something. I don't know. I, I really don't know because I got in when I was younger. So I don't really know. But I just feel like, you know, on the flip side, like, yes, I'm able to help people and make these videos. And maybe it's my purpose to do it because other people aren't always brave enough to come on camera or to write a blog or to do things to get the word out that 
I'm just guessing I've probably helped a lot of people with my videos over the last couple years so I always try to motivate myself in that way like I don't know like some people have told me that my videos have helped other times I'm just assuming you know people are maybe in the church and curious and type in Scientology maybe come across my videos maybe it's just outside people who are just curious getting a glimpse into the world of Scientology and hearing from an ex-Scientologist I don't really know all the times but you know it's just really weird to be kind of like figuring out my own path in this world and dealing with things that come up such as anxiety attacks which I've told you guys about panic attack nervous breakdowns and different stuff like that whereas before I would be going into Scientology and going on course or trying to get auditing or do different things whereas that was seen as a permanent solution like say someone dies like right now someone died I would go to the church to run out the loss I would be doing different objective processing I would be doing all sorts of things like look at that tree thank you look at that you know like they do different things to exteriorize you and whatever that they claim is you know the theory behind those type of processes right and that would be a permanent way to be able to like kind of handle and erase that loss and now I don't I know it might not be realistic to think you can like erase traumas forever but I think about it and it's like well when I'm having these anxiety attacks whatever I always think in like the Scientology thing like what is almost like the incident like what's it tied to and is there an earlier or similar and like maybe I could blow that charge and I think about different things like that not self auditing myself but I try to think like where does it derive from like where is it coming from and it could be from a past life right and all these different sort of theories and so like, I can't think in like the Scientology mindset about that like it might just because of mental health is just like physical health sometimes symptoms come up and I, I do think that a lot of it is from just living in the world in general and things come up and it's hard to cope a lot of the time. So I don't have like that way to cope with my problems and I do want to be able to get therapy and do all that, but it's just hard because before I used to feel like I had like a solution like, oh, there's something wrong here, Scientology. And like before, like I would tell my family about my problems or Jeff or like other people in my life. And it's like, they don't know because they might not be qualified in mental health or therapy or psychology or anything to be able to really exp explain or help me with what I'm going through. And the therapist I've had never really gave me a, like a toolbox, I guess, of how to deal with certain things that come up in my life and I haven't maybe gone to therapy long enough or had the right therapist to maybe help me with those type of things but it's just kind of like I'm kind of like going through and trying to figure out my mental health right now on my own and how to help myself when these different feelings and problems and things come up so it's just been very difficult to say the least like I've been doing better at times and then other times like I'm not and the other day, which was very alarming, which I'll tell you guys about, was Jeff and I were about to go to dinner and I started getting this horrible excruciating pain. Like it was like nothing I've ever experienced. Like I've had obviously my back pain, which was really bad and traumatizing and bad, but this was like weird because it was on the front side of my body. I'm talking from like my like shoulders to like my waist, like the whole middle side. So it was like almost like my upper abdomen, my sides, my ribs, underside my ribs, shooting pain into my chest, a stabbing pain in my chest. And it was just like the weirdest pain that I've ever experienced. I thought like I'm having appendicitis, kidney stones, like thinking of all these horrible things. Went to urgent care. They didn't know. They sent me to the ER. They put me on a morphine drip. Again, this is someone who doesn't even like taking like ibuprofen but again the pain was so horrible it was again I thought I was dying at the moment <laughs> and basically they did CAT scan, EKG, chest x-rays, blood work, like the whole nine yards basically was telling me oh you're having this type of spasming in your abdomen that's referring pain into these different areas so again it wasn't anything bad there was nothing again specific enough to really know like is this going to happen again where I'm like paralyzed from the pain that I was experiencing and stuff like that and so I was having a little bit of trouble a couple of days ago let's say that and otherwise Jeff and I were in Las Vegas a week ago I would say something like that and talking about Las Vegas this was before I turned 21 but Scientology had this whole idea that you know if you learn poker this is so crazy I just remember the story a woman told me this story in Scientology but it was also part of a plan for me was that if you learn how to play poker which I know how to play poker but anyways if you're playing professional poker there's a Scientologist who's a professional poker player if someone knows who this could possibly be let me know if you're like in the Scientology world or ex-Scientology world you know who I might be referring to as someone in LA I don't know who but his TRs are so good 
that he could bluff people out of hands, like he could be completely just like stone cold or whatever sort of thing is, and had a way of being able to read people's behaviors and different things due to understanding things about human behavior from Scientology, that he was able to win millions of dollars. So when I turned 21, in the meantime, I should learn how to play poker so I can go to Vegas or other casinos in LA to try to win money so I could donate it to Scientology, just like this other guy. So I just remember that story thinking about Las Vegas when I was trying to think about different updates for you guys. But I'm like, yeah, like learning how to play poker, to gamble, to give money to Scientology, like, gambling for Jesus sort of thing, but only gambling for L. Ron Hubbard. But that was another uh, brilliant idea of Scientology and how I could access money really quickly, hopefully, to be able to give to Scientology. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to tell you guys. Yeah, just, that's like basically like the gist of what's been going on since I posted my last video. I'm just really, I don't know, like my birthday's coming up and I'm gonna be 28. This is the last thing that I remembered I was gonna share. I'm gonna be 28 and it's been like 10 years since my first introduction to Scientology. And I just remember like back then, just like how fast time goes by. And back then when I was 18, thinking like in 10 years, I'm gonna obviously be a successful actor. I'm gonna be, you know, a Hollywood star maybe, or I'm gonna be able to have like a stable career and have money and have all these different things that would become of my career in my life. And yes, I have a nice house. I have my husband, Jeff, my dogs, like that is great. But my personal self, I just feel so stagnant. And I really do blame several years in Scientology when I was young and I should have been focusing on either college or focusing on better schooling or training or doing something for my life. And I devoted it on trying to be like a Scientology auditor. And it's like, what is that getting me in 2019? And yes, like every single day, like right now I could enroll in school and in four years or something, I could be in a different place in my life. I love doing YouTube. This is what I want to do. Whether it's my Mango Tea channel or Steven Mango TV or doing something in the social media space, that's what I really like and enjoy. But it's so fleeting, it comes and goes. There's months you make a lot of money and months you make nothing. So it's just kind of like, wow, like there's other friends of mine who are like lawyers or doctors or doing things. And here I am like still trying to figure out my life. And it's like, I hate feeling like I'm wandering through the world. And I do think that a lot of my traumas and different things that I've experienced have set me back in such a way that I'm fighting my mental health so I can get that squared away right now. So then I could kind of focus in on myself in these other areas that I'm trying to work out, including spirituality, including all of that. Like I'm not an atheist, guys, and that's no shade of people who are, but I believe in some type of spiritual power. And this is again, not shade to anyone else who does YouTube, but there are other channels and people who are like completely atheist or don't have any faith or anything. Even though they could have been in the Sea Org, like devoting themselves to a religious group. And I understand why later on you would, maybe lose faith in all sorts of religion or higher powers or beliefs, but I really do feel some type of connection on a spiritual level to other people, to the universe, to other things. And I think that's what drew me in Scientology because I'm such a spiritual person that I couldn't ignore that. Like I even wanted to be an auditor. I wanted to be on staff in the future because I so greatly believe in spirituality. I just don't know what it is specifically that I believe, but I know and I'm so in tune with the world and everything like that. So I don't know, I just feel like losing my faith and for all these years not really having something has really just shaken me up and made me feel out of place. And I've tried to go to other religions and groups and things and nothing's really felt right for me yet. So I don't know guys, I know maybe when I turn 28 on July 5th for the next year, maybe my life will start going to a positive place. Maybe my YouTube channels will start kicking off really big for me or I have a documentary I want to do and a couple other stuff, maybe things will start to change for me. I don't know. I had a couple acting auditions in the last week and stuff like that too. So I'm like, well, maybe something good will happen for me in the next year or two. And you know, I feel like I've moved on in a lot of ways from Scientology, but in other ways, I'm still held back by other thoughts and things. So that's honestly what I wanted to share with you guys today. I know I ramble. That's why I save it for the end of the video for any of you guys who just like to listen to me, talk, hang out. We'll chat in the comment section. And I have a lot of other videos I want to make for you guys. If you have a specific topic about Scientology that you want to cover, me to cover, let me know down below. I 
I feel like, you know, there's a lot of channels that already cover like a lot of Hubbard history, a lot of Scientology history going into certain courses. Like it might be cool for Jeff and I maybe to sit down and demonstrate TRs or something. Do you guys want to see that? That might be kind of cool. Um, and to do stuff like that or demonstrate auditing procedures. Like I can do that sort of stuff. I like to focus on like the psychology of things, the mental health aspects of Scientology, like the recovery, the aftermath, and just commenting on current Scientology events and stuff like that. The missing persons that are gone, Shelly Miscavige. Like I like covering that sort of stuff. But again, you guys are my viewers. If you want me to cover something specific, let me know. I have new videos coming on Mango Tea as well this week. So subscribe over there if you're interested in beauty drama or beauty news. I also post those videos on my community page here in case you guys aren't subscribed there and you have any interest in a specific video you guys can check them out thank you so much for watching guys make sure you're subscribed here and turning on your bell notifications which will send you a notification whenever i post so you don't miss any of my videos thank you so much for watching guys and i will see you in my next video have a good night guys